Um, so what are we looking at right now currently? The biggest thing that my eye draws to you with respect to our current, you know, trading or the current position of the day is going to be this large SMT that we formed over like the last session. So we're looking at our 20 day lows. Um, this is a time based liquidity pool and we're seeing this SMT that formed. Now, does that make me bullish? No, absolutely not. But it does make me more hesitant to be bearish. So because we have formed this SMT, the profile for the week can be one of two things in my mind. It's either going to be a bullish seek and destroy Friday, which looks something like, I mean, you guys had the lecture in your lecture package for bear seek and destroy Friday. It's exactly the opposite. And I'm pretty sure uh, inner discipline in his channel also posted a little bit about what that looks like. So it's either a bullish seek and destroy Friday where we can expect to go back internal into the range. As you can notice, we're trading on all three indices in a deep, deep discount now of the entire dealing range, right? Our Fibonacci 50% is still up in this one hour fair value gap, which, you know, would would see, you know, a 200 point retracement or, so, or something like that if we were to close the week, right, back into the range. Now, because we are so close to time-based liquidity, right, Despite seeing this SMT, I would need to see at least hourly or four hour structure to support higher prices, even trading up into this premium. So in my mind, there's two options for the way price goes. We either quickly manipulate lower and then close the range or you manipulate higher. And then next week we might come down and take these lows. Alternatively, right? Because we always have to consider the possibility of SMTs in the market. This could be a pivot, right? because we have our two criteria for a reversal in the market as well. So our two criteria for reversal, like we talked about yesterday in the stream, kind of when we talked about, you know, this reversal we were anticipating up in here, we had the criteria met up here as well for that reversal. And it's the same criteria that we can now see on the daily chart, right? Which is going to be, let me pull it up. Higher time frame PDRA, check, right? Daily swing low, if the 20 day lows, we uh, add this order block, I guess we can call it on ES and uh, NASDAQ, but really this divergence at these lows and then SMT. So when we look at our calibration of timeframes or our synchronization of timeframes, we're going to want to go daily into the hourly, right? To see if we get structure that shows we're going higher. And as you can see coming into the session, right? We've had breaks of structure. So we had a break of structure here. Uh, let's call this the break of structure. We're putting in a new short term high. But we have yet to really print uh, a major inefficiency besides this one. So my eye goes to this inefficiency down here. There's a potential. I want to I want to study how price reacted from this fair value gap on the hourly. And as you can see, the session here has not shown an inclination to explode higher. And when I mean that, I mean a smart money reversal, right? on the daily time frame is going to look like a wick. But on the hourly time frame, you'd see something like a V-shaped recovery. And we're used to seeing this, right? Because this on the on the higher time frame just looks like this. Now, the reason why we want to look for displacement, right? Because is because that shows institutional order pairing and buy-in or sponsorship of a move. Right now, I'm really not too convinced on that. Right now, I see a slow chop like this. All right, creating low resistance liquidity into a point of interest. But the reality is that we're still in a deep discounted market down here. This market down here is not the ideal area to short. So if I was looking for shorts, it would not be in this gap. I would expect this gap to uh, fail. It might be somewhere up in here. We also have NFP and NFP means a candle wick can do this, right? Uh, as we saw yesterday, Explosive price moves in the market during this week are definitely possible. So what does that mean as a trader? Really, what I would tell my students is that today is not an optimal condition to short the market and it's not structurally aligned to long the market. And doesn't that sound like shitty? <laughs> doesn't that sound like, wow, that sucks because it's NFP and I want to get involved. As always, the recommendation, and for me specifically today, is going to be to wait until the folder drops. I have no clue what price is going to do here. And uh, I have no problem saying that price will either give us a retracement, right? A reversal or a manipulation. 
So if we look at classic market cycles, right, we have a couple permutations of our IFTA market cycles that we can consider. First of all, we can consider this to be a displacement lag, right? So there's only th there's only a couple of conditions we can look for when we're associating market cycles with state of delivery. So we had a expansion in the market, right? In this leg right here. So we'll call this one. Well, maybe I'll use a text box so it's easier. So this expansion in the market here is something we want to study. We want to study, especially because we know this expansion was preceded by a reversal. So we'll actually call that up here to be a reversal. The first thing we had was a reversal. Why was it a reversal? Well, we had our two conditions, a higher time frame PD array plus an SMT. So now we can call that a reversal. We, we understand that on the market dynamic side, this is a valid reversal. This SMT, this higher time frame array, which was this four hour redistributed area of price. Okay, we have the qualifications to say that was a reversal in price. And then obviously <laughs> the large displacement confirms that i.e. market structure confirms that. Now we have, right, two options for down here. So this in here, the next leg obviously we'll say is an expansion. So this is going to be a bearish expansion. We wanna keep track of what the cycle of delivery is. So this is two. Okay, so now that we've had a reversal into an expansion, there are only a few options for price dynamics once we look at this area of price. I'll look in the chat as well. Yeah, I am recording, uh, Jazz, yep. Uh, I'm gonna keep this chat up to my right so I can see. And like, uh, just keep pinging me there if I don't answer. <laughs> so this is an expansion. Now we want to look at what the possible dynamics are for this area of price. And that's why I'm saying I am unsure. Because at the moment, we have the criteria, right, at point three for either a retracement or a reversal. We don't know yet. And, and why do I say we don't know yet? Um, first of all, do we have the conditions for a reversal? Absolutely. So at this point in time, we have all of the higher time frame conditions to frame this as a reversal in the market. Again, I'm not gonna use standard deviation projections or anything for this argument. We're just gonna use market cycles. So this here could be a reversal because again, we engaged a higher time frame array. What is that array? It's this daily swing low. And you might be saying we did not engage that PD array. We did on YM. So this higher time frame array, and you could also look right to, to this order block. And we're also technically still in this daily premium fair value gap. There's never been violated right here. I'll draw it up. So when I see SMT, right, that's specifically at a time-based liquidity level, that to me is a valid thesis for reversal. Plus we're in a daily fair value gap. And now we have hourly structure break right here. And I use the calibration of daily hourly, but on a move like this, I'm also looking at the four hour. I want to see how we trade in relation to premium levels of this gap. As you can see, this is one large gap. I would really, right, even if I was bearish, not touch shorts until we came above this 50%. For me, the risk to rewards just not there because I don't know yet if this is going to be a retracement or a reversal. What I know at the moment under both scenarios is that retracement or reversal in my playbook and my students playbook, we don't short a premium or a discount market, especially after seeing signatures of potential reversal. And what are those signatures, right? Hourly market structure shift right in here. Hourly fair value gap is printed right in here. And then we have a respect of that hourly fair value gap, meaning price is referring back to that inefficiency and using it to move higher. Again, another important thing to oh, another important thing we want to monitor is if we have any lower time frame divergences in this session, meaning in the session that keyed off of that hourly fair value gap, right? And as you can see, this is my 50 minute chart. That statement is also valid. We have, whoops, sorry. That statement is also valid. So we have a lower time frame 
divergence in a point of interest inside of the higher time frame divergence. Now, some people who like uh, watch a lot of days stuff will know this as sequential SMT. This is something he taught in his private mentorship for quite a lot of money. Um, I had some insight into that. I didn't take his mentorship, but some of my colleagues did, some of my friends did, and uh, I learned some of the concepts. Um, I'm not here to teach those because I'm not day and I'm not gonna teach them to you as well as he would, but you don't have to pay for the mentorship to understand that a lower time frame SMT inside a higher time frame cycle. And if I put on quarterly theory here, you would see that this is happening during a set a cycle open, right? A new cycle. This is a 90 minute cycle. And this is the daily or weekly cycle it is a high confluence turtle soup. Essentially what would be taught by the turtle soup traders is that is a trade you want to take. You see that SMT into a higher time frame PDA rate in a new cycle within a larger time from SMT, you long it. And you would have got a great trade out of it, right? Say you're trading London session, do you get 40 points? Absolutely, do you get 60 points? Probably, there you go, yeah. Fantastic. Can I ask real quick, yeah. when you said, I'm going to, I'm not going to use standard deviations, I'm just looking at this from an IPDA standpoint, yep. market cycles, like what, what, is there a reason for that? Like, uh, just, um, just, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just thinking about some of the, okay, some gotcha. of the people okay. who haven't right. got to standard deviations yet. And uh, like I said, okay. when when I teach and when I trade, I build outwards on concepts. So yes, I can approach this now from a standard deviation argument and also try and show a little bit of insight into where I think we are in the current power of three development. However, you don't need standard deviations. You don't need, right? Turtle soup, SMT, sequential SMT. You don't need this knowledge. You need the fundamentals, which is market cycles, right? Reversal, expansion. What are we down here? You don't know if we're in a retracement or reversal yet. In both cases, irrespective of this known thing that we're in, you would not short a premium market or a, a, a discount market, and you obviously wouldn't short a reversal. So both of these scenarios, right? Like this Schrodinger's cat of situations would result in shorts being placed only in premium. Meaning if we are a reversal, you can assume that we would reverse to an area of, you know, logical interest to again, have another reversal and continue the longer time frame trend. What's longer time frame trend at the moment in our heads, longer time frame trend in our moment is bearish, right? We have monthly SMT at the highs. We have daily market structure shifts. We're keying off of daily inefficiencies and respecting them. The only thing we have to consider is the optics of this specific SMT at this specific level. And now we have bullish market structure, although I'm not entirely convinced, but this is how I do top down analysis. So I'll start with my market cycles and I'll start with the fundamentals, like the simple things. Where are we tending to go in the higher time frame? What inefficiencies on the higher time frame are we respecting? What inefficiencies on the higher time frame are we disrespecting, right? We have now invalidated this bullish array. We're still holding this one, right? YM was definitely weaker in validating two daily bullish arrays. In fact, three, if you count this one right here, but on this side of the curve, there's two arrays that have failed on the daily for value gap side. So bias going into the session, like I said, is neutral for shorts until this area here and potentially suspecting an inside bar reversal. Um, which is going to be our profile that looks something like this, right? This would be like a bullish seek and destroy Friday, meaning we've seek and destroyed the liquidity in the market to the buy side and sell side, and then Friday closes back in the range. And actually uh, that schematic there does it no justice, but <laughs> inner cert inner disciplines does do it justice. Because this morning, I was just check, checking a look at the channels and the analysts, and I saw this beautiful image from him, so I will post that into our voice channel. There we go. So this is a potential profile I also had my eye on, but I do not think Friday will take the highs of the week. Now, that would be an incredible, unexpected move, in my opinion. Um, now it's NFP. <laughs> this is a great day to study price action and be like crazy shit can happen. 
Uh, I wouldn't expect us to reverse against this manip if this was a manipulation. I would expect us, however, to see some bullish price action, you know, in confluence with this idea of retracement, reversal, and not knowing which one we're in yet, but knowing either case, if I'm bearish, I'm not touching shorts till right here. This is my line of shorts. So if I get an opportunity, to so what I'm saying to you guys is I will do two things this morning. First of all, I will not trade the folder drop because you guys know me. I love to trade news drops, but I'll only trade them if I have a clear bias and I have a clear expectation of price delivery, especially on a Friday, especially after I've had a green week and especially on NFP. So that's the first thing not trading the news folder drop. And I recommend to my students to never trade the news folder drop until you are consistently profitable. Trade 30 minutes after NFP when you're starting or guys sit the day out and I'll sit the day out too. If there's nothing of interest, I'll just not take any trades because again, our rules matter a lot. And that's the one thing you're going to learn from our live streams with me, with Gabe, with inner, right? With my students, we don't compromise on our rules. We might compromise and change our bias if the market shows us something different, but we do not compromise on our rules. So there's two possible scenarios now. So that's that was the market cycles kind of uh, argument. Let's now quickly look at where I would potentially get involved if I was to look for um, some sort of trade. Long, right, given that argument. So my thesis is retracement reversal unconfirmed, but what is confirmed is that I am not shorting a uh, discount market. So there's two scenarios, I think, for the folder. Scenario one is this. Day closes something like this. If we take this low, I definitely won't look to short um, today. I won't look to short lower than the IP to 20 day lows on, on today's Friday. Just because this is a time-based liquidity pool, longer time frame. you guys saw my analysis. I'm, I'm actually uh, leaning quite bearish on the higher time frames if we can get some displacement. So this would be a quarterly shift. So I'm looking at kind of my, you know, 20, 40, 60 day look back, right? Trying to see where we can target a premium or discount market. Sorry, I keep, in, keep uh, mixing up those words. So again, a discount market is gonna be below our 40 day low and really right into this monthly gap of 61.8. And then this, this daily unmitigated fair value gap of 70.5. If we get extremely bearish, we won't respect any of these levels and we'll come all the way down. But we don't know that yet. And that's something I'm, I'm not taking swings for like at least a week, right? What I would take a swing for is something like this. There we go. I'd take that second stage distribution of this market maker cell model. That's where I would, right? Essentially this 0.75 to one, that's where I'd swing shorts because it's the highest probability shorts. And uh, I'll let you guys know if I'm, I'm looking at any sh uh, swings in the future. But for now, today, the objective for me would be this up to the 20 day low and, and nothing more to the sell side. And I don't think YM would need to reach down into here, but it could, right? Which would be YM's, let's look at the look back boxes again. This would be YM's 40 day low. So we'll keep that as a area of interest because YM has been leading the bearish charge. <laughs> YM has been the most bearish for some time. We noticed that last week too. If you look at the price action, YM, after we swept this high, rejected quite aggressively. In comparison to ES in here, which uh, actually respected this PD array, YM closed through it, right? This survey gap. And the next day had another down close day while ES and NASDAQ had a consolidation day. Um, so yeah, we have this on our chart and we have these two levels on our chart. If we come down on news and sweep this level, I'll only look to long. And if I'm wrong, I'll take a small loss. And <laughs> like yesterday, if you look to long, you would have been invalidated incredibly quickly, which is good because moves like this make sure there's no room for you to like question your trade, average down and, and maybe do something stupid. Like I'll be wrong and I'll get out. If we do something like this, however, so that's scenario one. And this is going to be our classic, right? Reversal here, accumulation, manipulation, distribution. So this would be a just classic A, M or uh, A, M, D, right? So we can have an, uh, this reversal here is the X right down here. And we're going to assume that this SMT plus this hourly structure shift plus this lower time frame, sequential SMT is what they call it, is going to offer us a reversal in the market. So we'll mark that out again here. So we have a reversal X. I'm just going to use the same color blocks for all this X. A, this is all accumulation. 
M down here, D. And that would be a very classic reversal cycle, a very classic reversal signature. X, A, M, D, take out these weak longs, right? Engage our higher time frame point of interest and then close back in the range. That'd be very expected. Um, my eye probably is, is favoring something like that if we don't do something like this, which is gonna be, right? Say this is not a reversal, but a retracement. And this is gonna be X is the expansion, right? We can have an accumulation here, right? So now we're just assuming expansion, retracement engine, so accumulation. Now we can deviate this range and then distribute, which is assuming this is not a reversal in the market, but simply a retracement. So then this would be X is the expansion. This is the accumulation. This would be the manipulation. I would only short above this level. And this is the distribution. Both are entirely possible. We don't know yet. Um, and uh, that's okay. It's okay to say that. Both these are on our chart and that's why we wait. We wait for the folder to show us. If the folder manipulates higher, right? Immediately, we can look for shorts. Again, we're not just gonna randomly short up here. It makes no sense to do that. There is so much LRLR. -R. Remember, retracing a fair value gap is low resistance, especially one that looks like this. Incredibly low resistance in here. This is kind of like butter. You can just cream through all of this liquidity very quickly, right? It's low resistance liquidity, especially if this is a reversal. Now, if we get structure and we get something that looks like that, perfect. Maybe try risking a short today. Again, 10 FP. I, I suggest if, if you haven't traded NFP, don't. And I probably won't unless I see a really good setup, guys. If we see something like this, again, what we'll do is we'll wait for structure, which will probably be 30 minutes to maybe even an hour after the folder, who knows? And then we'll try and trade a long back into internal. The nice thing about trading longs to internal today is you have a very, very clear discounted or premium market target, which is just this hourly fair value gap. Like you can just pick a level, right? And trade external to internal. And this would be a reaccumulation of potentially a higher time frame sell model. Right, this reaccumulation, or it could be a full on reversal, but you don't care because you would take your position off at a logical level. Internal range liquidity, 50% of the dealing range, fantastic. Trading short is also good, but you need to see confirmation that this short term structure shift is being invalidated and I'm not shorting in discount. So that's the thesis. We have 10 minutes till news. Let's do two more things. First of all, we'll look at dollar. Dollar is coming off of external move back into internal overnight. So we can potentially expect another move to external, right? So this is just simple internal, external, internal market maker model. And again, if you look at our higher time frame, the daily, you can frame, right? This internal range, this daily volume imbalance or this weekly fair value gap. Now we've retraced this daily SIBI. It's not a, not a premium yet, which is worth, which is worth um, looking at. We also have yet to get a market structure shift. So this hourly candle, do you notice how this hourly candle will determine if we break structure below this low? It's not a coincidence. It's because we have a high impact folder. So this could easily wick the entirety of this low and close back up here. And we'll know within the hourly candle, but right now market structure on this Dixie chart is bullish, strictly bullish. Why? We came off a higher time frame PD array. We displaced twice. So market structure shift, break a structure, break a structure again. We have created inefficiency. We are respecting inefficiency in these wicks. Let's zoom in in these wicks. Now this candle has 40 minutes and an NFP folder to go. I don't give a two, I don't give two dams what it looks like now. Because as you guys know, this candle could easily, seriously close like this. And then, you know, rip higher after. It could also easily close as a solid bodied candle all the way through here and look like that. And then in which case we expect us to deliver back into external dollars, not given. what I'm trying to say is that dollars, not giving me a signature right now that I can key off of on the indices. I don't care about this early bearish delivery because right now we have news in nine minutes and this candle means nothing to me, just like this hourly candle here also can do a whole shitload of things. <laughs> so we want to just be patient, watch what's going to happen. 
And today, today it will probably be a day where I read the tape unless something really nice comes to me. And that's, that's, that should be your normal NFP expectation. Are you regularly looking at dollar trading futures? Absolutely. Yeah. I will look at uh, Dixie. Um, sometimes I'll look at bonds for divergences with Dixie, but not always. I think I, my intramarket analysis is principally focused on the ES, the YM and the NASDAQ, right? Three indices and then the dollar. And I like to use the dollar because generally speaking, they're inversely correlated, generally speaking, right? So we are in a higher time frame sell model here. Right, good luck. Higher time frame potential sell model. We've been in a higher time frame buy model on this side, and now we could enter a higher time frame sell model. Generally speaking, there's good correlation. You can look up a correlation coefficient between the dollar and the indices and see that in most cases, it's much better than it currently is, which has been a bit, a bit, uh, a bit suboptimal recently. Extra confidence. Yeah, exactly. Intermarket analysis is important. Um, in the same way, SMTs are extremely important. Like I will never consider um, one index without the other. And I will always validate my reversals with SMTs. There is no, there is no IPTA market cycle change, accumulation, a manipulation phase, an expansion phase, a reversal phase ends and begins with an SMT. The market books SMT as an algorithmic footprint of institutional sponsorship of a move. Whether that's a manipulation, an accumulation, or a distribution, we use SMTs to validate the state of delivery changing in a move. And uh, go and back test. Every single move is capped off with an SMT and begins with an SMT. Um, and even accumulations end with SMTs generally. So yeah, definitely consider intramarket analysis in that uh, sense. Do I ever look at the VIX? No, I uh, used to. Didn't really get a lot of value from it. Yeah, Rob, same here. Um, I tell my students, like, so I have a couple of my students in here, and most of them know that we don't usually even touch NFP. Like, we just tape read it. Um, I think it's cool if you get an opportunity post NFP, and it's really awesome if you have a clear bias. Like, say, for example, Rob, we had put an equal lows at the up to 20 day and overnight session, we had a classic protraction into a four hour for value gap premium. Okay, well, then maybe you can, you know, you can stab one contract on NFP and try and catch a 250 point distribution lower, risking 50 points, right? That wick. I'm not doing that today because there is no clear target for me like that. Um, but yeah, I. I agree with you. Generally speaking, I don't like trading NFP either. I think it's extremely volatile and it's, it stands for not for professionals, right? <laughs> NFP equals not for professionals. Unless you have access to that folder and you know exactly where that wick is going to stop manipulating, which we don't know. I mean, we can try to assume as ICT traders or infer, but it's not for professionals. We shouldn't trade it. And, uh, if we do trade it, I always reduce my risk as well. So I'll open up my broker. But uh, don't think I'm gonna be trading too much size or trading unless I see something really nice. Like probably like Rob said, I'm looking for this move. Uh, that move would be nice to me, something like that. Let me look at my broker guys. Good questions though. Gotta grab my computer charger. Do you look at SMT between the indices and Dixie? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, to be honest, I, I don't, um, but I have been considering looking at that. So when like Dixie takes out a high or a low, but the indices don't, I have not yet to include that as a major part of my analysis. Um, no, I won't lie, but I think that's a very interesting thing. I, I, we could potentially back test. Maybe you could back test and report some data back to us. That would be cool. So Luca, maybe, maybe that could be your homework <laughs> is report some, report some data back to premium on SMT, uh, divergences between the dollar and the indices when one sweeps and the other doesn't. That's super cool. Actually. I'm just going to close out some of my tabs cause my computer is kind of acting slow. Sorry. One second boys and girls. Are you considering anything with the devil's mark of 2 p.m. candle from yesterday? Absolutely, right? That's a four hour devil's mark. So if we look at our four hour chart, right? If this is to be a reversal, 
This is a high confluence target. However, I'm, my eye does not go to it yet just because a, you know, the, to displace this range again with a higher time frame bearish thesis with dollar potentially entering a buy model off a weekly inefficiency, right? We want to go weekly four hour. This is our time frame calibration. We want to see essentially how dollar reacts to this level right here, because this is going to be the level which dollar will hold after this crazy folder wicks. Um, it's a four hour right, high confluence breaker. Right? It's the last up close candle before we liquidate sell side into our weekly fair value gap. So yeah, um, if we get extremely bullish, yeah, absolutely. But right now I'm kind of in a uh, assume, assume trend until otherwise disproved. And this hourly fair value gap is not enough for me to assume this move. It's enough for me to assume this move at the moment, at the moment, uh, things can change. And we really, really do jazz still want to be considering what happens with SM with this SMT and this order pairing. If YM gets extremely bullish off of this low 20 day low, then very possible for the indices to say, we don't need this low. Like we're, we're good. We're chilling. But if YM does not hold like this, we're going to look at this area of the chart. If YM is resisted by this area of the chart, right? This breaker, then you can assume the indices are going to come for this 20 day low. You can even just choose this one candle if you want. There you go. It overlaps what would, what will form a fair value gap. For example, if YM does not wick this entire inefficiency in here, that's formed. This will form a fair value gap. And then we want to see how it reacts in there. If we get some, you know, confluence next week of lower prices. Cool. So Dixie, you want to watch this area. We also have these overlapping wicks, which is an implied fair value gap. Now I don't use those often, but definitely worth considering. Also pay attention to the fact, I know the folder is in two minutes, so I'll stop yapping, but pay attention to the fact that this four hour fair value gap, right? Could still potentially hold after this wicks high, if it does, but I'm looking at this breaker. I'm also looking at this area of price for, for us to trade into. Would be nice to see us even come down into here. That's a discount of that uh, gap. Cool. So what what do I see uh, with one minute left going into the folder? I guess lower time frame analysis, right? This is what we always like to see as well. Let's quickly do that. Yeah, I'm largely undecided, guys, for what this folder is going to do. Uh, yep, don't know yet. Don't know yet. Could see either. I think this is like, the, again, I never would long into this, guys. <laughs> and if you guys know one thing, take away one thing is that you should not long into this unless one of the indices does this. <laughs> if one of the indices does this and you get a stop hunt, great. For me, this is like too smooth. I really don't like longing smooth edges. Smooth edges are the best way to invalidate a trade. I don't care if this goes straight up because in my mind, it's not high confluence because this is LRLR, not HRLR. Oh, there we go.